actually defined it. We are going to define it for you here. We're also going to talk to you about how to attract them. Because att attracting a top performer is not posting an ad and interviewing them and begging them to take a job or overselling them into a job. We're going to teach you how to forensically interview the recruiters so that you know what you're getting. We're also going to talk to you about having a roadmap for their success and how to measure them properly so you know that the person you've got at that desk is the right person. So let's get started with what makes a good recruiter. We all, none of us have come to this industry with any formal training, so we're hodgepodge around the table. Basically, somebody has walked up to us in our past and gone, hey, uh, would you like to make a lot of money? You look like you'd be a good recruiter. And because of that, our industry sucks in about 1,000 people. Out of 1,000 people suck in, we might get 10 of those people that make good recruiters. And it's because we're sucking everybody in. Let's talk about what a recruiter actually is. A recruiter is not a salesperson, first and foremost. They look like a salesperson. They feel like a salesperson, but they're not a salesperson. If you walked up to a recruiter and said, hey, do you think I should buy this? They would probably consult with you before they did that. Okay? Recruiters like to make offers. They don't like to ask for business. That's a big distinction. Most of you will find that you can't get your recruiters to go out and meet your clients. They're happy sitting at their desk, hiding, and talking to candidates. They don't want to ask the client from, for business. Recruiters are people watchers. They're often not the life of the plea. And you will miss up your interview process because when you interview a recruiter, you should never leave the room feeling like, yes, I love this person. This person makes me feel good. That's not a, a recruiter doesn't make you feel good. A recruiter leaves you with a very neutral feeling and that you trust them. They don't hit the buttons that a salesperson does. It's a trust factor, not a feel good factor. The other thing is that recruiters know their ratios. A true recruiter, when you say to them, you know, tell me about your submittal to hire ratio, they're going to know it off the top of their head. And they're going to be concerned that you're going to be messing with that. A salesperson is not going to understand their ratios. They're not going to understand submittal to hire, hire uh, interview to hire ratios. So you need to be aware of that. There are a couple of different types of recruiters out there. Okay? A person coming from a sales background that loves to go and talk to clients and get orders is an account manager or a hunter. They're a salesperson. They can recruit. That's why we, we think that they're good at it. They're not. They're, they can do probably 10% of the production that a good recruiter can do. A re recruiter who can go out and sell is classified as a 360 desk recruiter. And this is what all the business owners out there are looking for. They're looking for that high, they're looking for the person that can come in and generate money by picking up the phone, getting the order, and then filling the order. Those people are very rare. And when you find them, they're worth their weight in gold. But you have to be able to distinguish them from a salesperson. Okay? A true recruiter is buried at the desk. They like their tools, and they're a farmer. They'll spend all day, every day, looking for people. They're not incented by money. They're incented by doing a good job. They're incented to make you look good. Okay? It, it is truly a misnomer about a recruiter and their 
you know, you want to pay them well. A lot of our top performers we find in the marketplace, their desk is covered in trophies, and they're on average making around $60,000 a year when they're generating upwards in the millions for their employer. Okay? Any questions there? Okay. Well, I have a question, Rebecca. This is Marsha. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. It is an average of sixty thousand a year. Is that what is that based? Is that based nationwide or specifically in Southeast? I mean, where? How do you get that's, that? That's nationwide. That's those are those recruiters that are sitting at like a manpower and a deco and stuff like that. They usually a recruiter likes their base, and then they get a small, um, a small commission. A, a true rec a recruiter, you can get if you can put them on a base. They're more tied to a base than anything else. It's that the business owners aren't willing to pay the bases. They want to get them for free. And they haven't given that piece up. Okay. Okay? What, now, we're going to go into the nature and the nurture of recruiters. We use a six-point scale when we're measuring recruiters. So we know what we're looking at. And we give a guarantee on production based on these next six points. And the nature is the things that people are born with. And really, it's how they've grown up. The first question we ask them is, tell me about your very first job. We're looking for their ability to have to be in the marketplace that they understand hard work equals money. Hard work equals money. Not easy work. Hard work. And when we ask them about their first job, they typically are, they've had it by the age of 15, and they had to break a rule or two to get the job. For us, these are absolutes. We will not take, we will not give a guarantee on production on somebody who says, I got my first job at 17. We want to know that the person broke the rules and went and got the job ahead of time. It means that they've been in the marketplace longer and they know how to make money. They also know that it's hard work. Okay? The next question is, who in your family is an entrepreneur? a salesperson, or a new immigrant. We're looking for their ability to understand risk versus reward. And for those of you here that are our owners that have children, you understand that your children negotiate with you every day. We have a four-year-old who walks around my office. My assistant has a four-year-old. She's been with me since she was a baby. At four years old, she negotiates with us. I took her out to sell cookies. She sold 32 boxes of cookies for a quarter each. At four years old, she understands how to, how to basically work the system. You need, these, you need somebody who lives in that environment, who's grown up in that environment. You can't teach that when they get too old. They have to have grown up in it. So new immigrant, somebody in their family is a new immigrant, a salesperson, or an entrepreneur. Risk versus reward, and they know how to negotiate. The next thing is, which is kind of an interesting little thing, in our industry, it's really, really important that you have ADD. And everybody laughs when I say that. But the side effect of ADD for our industry is absolutely paramount. Because people with ADD are naturally read people's body language. And that's what makes a good recruiter, is the ability to sit across from a candidate and know when they're, be they're BSing you. And they have the ability to also tell when the person is going to skip out in the process. Everybody has a gut act instinct. That gut instinct is coming from 
that ADD that we have. It also helps us multitask and deal with the ups and downs of our industry. Because without it, we wouldn't recover quick, quickly enough. We all have deals that go sour. Anybody in their right mind would not do this job because you all know that like six of your deals are going to go south. <laughs> the ADD keeps us in the game. Okay, we are we have a high propensity for um, loving the challenge and loving the game, and that's where it's coming from. Any questions on these? Okay. The next thing is the nurture. Sorry, was there a question? Okay. The nurture is what what are we looking for from the recruiters in our industry? This is we need people that have now come into the job. We don't touch any recruiter that hasn't had a minimum of twenty four months under their belt. Okay? And the reason why is because the first year and a half is a 100% investment from the employer's perspective. You have to invest in their training, and you have to teach them to work the numbers. At 18 months, at, at 18 months, everybody's production in our industry slows down. And what happens is they're basically trying to figure out if they're going to stay or not. And this is where you, you risk the most money. Between 18 months and 24 months, they're trying to decide if they're going to stay. At 24 months, they're staying. And that's when we want to talk to them. Don't talk to recruiters that have been in the industry less than 24 months. They're a high risk of turnover for you. After 24, between 24 and 36 months, they're going to take all the stuff that we've taught them and they're going to turn it into an art form. Okay? Now, that's when you want them. You really, they're on the verge of being an outlier. Anybody over three years old in our industry who has a stable work history is somebody you should be looking at. It doesn't matter what sector they come from. You can teach them the sector. It's their understanding of the whole process that you're looking for. Next thing that we're looking for is we want a guy who's billed over $200,000 in GM. There's a big distinction between the guy who billed $100,000 and 99999 and the guy who built 200,000 the person that built 200,000 in GM is a million dollar biller that one penny makes the difference between the guy who's going to be in the industry forever making no money and the guy who's going to be in the industry forever making lots of money okay you have to quantify that they have built $200,000 in GM in a 12-month rolling period. It's a very important thing. The next thing is, you have to be the major breadwinner in the family. The reason why is because the family unit will do what it takes to make sure that they make the income. They won't be tied to having to leave the office because the kids are sick. They have nowhere else to go but to make the money. They must be the major breadwinner in the family. If they are not, they will never have their heart in it. It will always be a job. It will never be an avocation. Okay? As soon as our people hit those six points, we put a guarantee on production on them. Any questions? Okay, how to attract good recruiters. <clears throat> Was there a question? Okay. <clears throat> it's all about time. A lot of agencies out there nowadays are 
bringing people in, interviewing them, and making the job offer right then and there. It's not the way to attract them. You're overselling them, and they're overselling you, and you're getting yourself into a situation where you're not setting clear expectations. We advocate three interviews with a candidate before you start talking offer. You're, you need to be aware of the people that are in your organization and what they're saying about you. Your, the recruiters are checking to see who you've hired and who you've let go and what you're hiring. If you're making bad hiring, if you're making hiring mistakes and you're letting people go, it's affecting your ability to get better recruiters. So recruiters will go to Glassdoor. If none of you have gone and checked your um, footprint on Glassdoor, you need to be there. You need to have your employees filling out Glassdoor. Hey, it's a great place to work. It's a good, you know, work-life balance. Management understands what I, I want for a living. Your yeah, ability to attract good talent. Go ahead. Somebody had a question? No, not a question. I apologize. There's just a lot of clicking going on. Is that, I know that's something to get an campus on our end. I'm having a lot of trouble hearing because of the clicking. Uh, let's see who that is. Let me just have a quick look here. What I'll do is I'll mute everybody and then we can... Go from that doesn't seem to stop it. I apologize. This seems to be something with the go to meeting. This is a go to meeting issue. I don't know why. It's that's fine. Go ahead. I okay. just want to make you let my head repeat. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. How many of you are out on Glassdoor? How many of you go and promote your employee employees and recruiters to go on Glassdoor and talk about your company? Anybody? Yes, we do. Okay. Get out there more and more. You know, Facebook's another great place to talk about your great companies. Be careful there's some groups on Facebook that will, you know, that get you into these, you know, firing lines. Stay out of them. Recruiters are watching that stuff. Remember, recruiters are people watchers. So they're, they're watching you, OK? <clears throat> when you first engage a recruiter, you should take them for coffee. And you should never say you have a job for them. You need to make them work for it. It's like, it's like catching, catching a butterfly. Have a coffee and see if you like them. Don't interview them. They're terrible interviewers, if any of you have noticed. Coffee, one month, go back another month and have another coffee with them. See how their career is going. You, we don't invest enough time in building our own talent pool for us. It's OK to go out for coffee and say, well, I like you, but you haven't done this, this, and this. So be a mentor to them. They want to talk to you. They want to be mentored by you because their own management is not doing that. And it's the best way for you to get out in the marketplace and groom your next staff member. OK? So three interviews, first two interviews, you know, first interview is coffee. Second interview, they meet your team. Let them come in and look around. Take them for dinner. Get to know them. Do not make a quick hiring decision. It should take you, you know, a month to hire the right person, not 30 seconds. And the other problem that we run into with a lot of owners is that they're like, I need somebody yesterday. Well, you should have started interviewing six months ago. OK? And that's, I want to really promote the fact that you guys need to be out there promoting your businesses. How to forensically interview your recruiters. First, first of all, we're so happy when we get somebody in front of us and we get a hold of the interviewing process that we forget that we need to stop 
listen and watch and take our time. The biggest complaint we have about the recruiters that we deal in is that they, the recruiters are like, you spend a lot of time with us. That's right. We spend a lot of time with our recruiters before we put them in front of you because we want to make sure that these are viable assets for you. We are listening to everything. We're watching their emails. We're watching their Facebook. We're watching their LinkedIn. It's not just about the one, the meeting that you're having with them. It's about the meltdown that they had on Facebook in a group for recruiters. It's the meltdown that they had on Facebook because somebody in their family ticked them off. Forensically, you, and it's kind of interesting, is that we keep telling our clients that we need to be checking them on a social media platform, but none of us are checking our own recruiters out there. You need to be doing that. If they're blogging, you need to follow them. If they have a Twitter account, you need to be finding out what they're doing. Okay? Time, time, and time. The hardest thing for a recruiter to withstand in an interview is just ask a question and shut up. A lot of us don't do that. We're just so happy to have somebody interested in coming to work for us. Just ask a simple question. Watch them run. We have questions that we ask. We ask. We get some of the questions we ask right off the bat, and I'll go to the bottom here, is tell me about a time you had to quit a job. And every recruiter will tell you, oh, my employer will walk me out. And the first thing we say to our recruiters is, how you quit your current employer is how you will quit our client. You will not walk out. Tell us how you're going to do this. Tell us how you've done it in the past. You want to watch for the guys that are like, I have a book of business I can bring with me. If you're taking somebody else's book of business into your business, don't be surprised when your recruiter walks out with it. How the recruiter leaves their current employer is how they're going to leave you. Okay? So check that ahead of time. Also ask them. What does your employer have to do to keep you? It's an interesting question. Because we tell employers all the time that you're mistreating your recruiters. And they're like, but I give them lots of money. I have moved recruiters because a manager refused to put flowers on her desk every week. Multi-million dollar biller, and the manager laughed at her. My manager puts fresh flowers on her desk every week. You need to know this so that when your staff is leaving, that you've done everything for them. Okay? The other thing that we ask for when we're doing our interviews is we are actually asking for a report. I don't want your client names. I have no interest in stealing your book of business. <coughs> I have an interest in knowing what that recruiter has produced. And I want it on paper. You can't fake that report. I've seen recruiters fake T4s. I've seen recruiters do it all. You want a copy of their current employment agreement. You want a copy of the reports that they're given but you do not want to get yourself in a situation with one of your colleagues where you have their client list. Have the recruiter black out the client list. You want to make sure that the recruiter can place the people that you need placed. The bill rate and the pay rate is so that you can figure out what their numbers are. It's not a competitive advantage. It's can they negotiate good rates. <laughs> and if they're not going to provide that report, don't touch them. Now, they may not know what that report looks like either. And that's why 
talking to them now and having, and if they don't have that report, you could give that report to them in your first copy meeting and say, I'd like you to track these numbers over the next six weeks and have them generate that report. That's why you want to take your time in this process. You want to know what they're doing for sourcing, screening, send-outs, interviews, submittals, and iron. Okay? Those ratios, you don't want somebody who submits sources, thousands of candidates, and they don't go anywhere. We can all blame it on the owner of the agency. But remember, you are the owner of the agency. And you know if you have somebody that's doing nothing but sourcing crap, it's never going to be the recruiter's fault. It's always going to be your fault, right? But you know it's the recruiter's fault. In an interview process, the recruiter's going to be like, I sourced all these people and they don't know what to do with them. You need to be listening for that stuff. Okay? But you need to know what their ratios are. Any questions on this? Okay. A lot of staffing agencies that we deal with and recruitment firms and executive search firms always have this wonderful thing where they call us and they're like, I'd like a 3 day recruiter. Okay. How are you successful in your environment? Well, they're going to come in, I'm going to give them a phone, and they're going to go and generate their own business. Well, I'm sorry. Everybody's looking for that. Recruiters don't need that. You, if you don't have a plan on what they've got to do in the first 30, 60, 90 days, you shouldn't be hiring anybody. You know what revenue you need to capture. So when I do a 30, 60, 90, I have five accounts that I need somebody to come in and work with my hiring managers and fill those orders. Those orders are going to be, you know, software tech orders or, or software development orders, or they're going to be my recruiting orders, or they have a specific job. And I have a plan on how they should do it. Too many recruiting agencies bring somebody in, stick them at a desk, and go, good luck, survive. That's not fair. And that's not setting anybody up for success as burning your time and money. You should have a sector, you should have a list of 10 accounts that you want to go and get, and you should know the revenue that should be generated off those accounts. If you don't have that, don't hire. You should have a six-month plan because it's going to take the first year is a build year. You know, they're going to have to develop their pipelines. You need to know what they need to be generating in the first six months so that they're breaking even for you. What is that cost of that desk? A lot of you don't think about what it costs to have a recruiter there. I can tell you that every recruiter is worth $250,000 in GM, but you can't tell me what it costs to keep your lights on. So you need to work those numbers backwards. Where they should be at the end of the first year. If a recruiter generates between sixty and one hundred and twenty thousand dollars their first year in business at your desk, and that's off the street, that's just anybody. They're keep them because the second year they'll double that. If they generate fifty nine thousand, fire them because. Doubling 59,000 is not going to get you where you need to get to. Okay? By the end of the second year, they should be fully ramped at 250. By the end of five years, they should be managing a book of business, and you should be able to cut them loose if you don't need them anymore. When you have recruiters that are hanging in your environment, for five, seven, ten years, they own too much of your business. You either need to move them into another job or you need to think about where your business is going. 
They have a lifespan. Lifespan in your office should be five to seven years. After that, you're starting to risk too much. And you're not pruning the tree. The only ratio that we measure, and the only ratio that matters, is send outs. Every agency out there is measuring how many people did you interview today? How many people did you submit? How many people did you uh, present? I don't care. The law of averages comes down to six send outs a week consistently. Six send outs a week will net me $250,000 a year. If you don't, if the recruiter can't get six send outs a week because they don't have enough orders, then they better find other orders and market candidates. All the other noise that you hear, all the other stuff you're playing with is cannon fodder. That's it. You can measure it, and you can look at it, and you guys can all sit and analyze it, but it's not making you money. The only place it's making you money is send out. We mandate that our recruiters send out a week. If they're not doing six send outs a week, within the first 90 days, we got a problem. And that's a law of averages. So. We've talked about what makes a good recruiter, how to attract them, how to interview them, and how to do a roadmap and what to measure. Do you have any questions? <coughs> no? Wow, that was easy. Rebecca, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, this is Tom X. How are you? Good, and you? Good, thanks. I, I shot you a couple of questions, um, typed them. I see I, here, yes. Okay. So um, if you could just talk about those, that would be awesome. I got a lot of um, noise around me. That's why I'm muted out. Okay. Uh, so I don't want to distract uh, the other people that are listening. But I'll turn, I'll, I'll mute in and listen to what you have to say. Thanks. Okay. So he has, I, I, thank you, Tom. I have a person, I personally, have just started building an internal recruitment database. What are some of the best industries to target on LinkedIn? And do you have certain messages and templates? Um, Tom, I'm going to have you come back off of mute. When you're talking about best industries, what, what do you mean? Yep. Well, is there certain industries that you target when you, because so I'm, you know, we have, uh, I own about a, a 45 um, a recruiter um, boutique shop uh, in the Connecticut area, and we're looking to build our own you know, database of recruiters. And, you know, I realize certainly I appreciate a lot of what you said in terms of it taking time, so I know it's going to take some time, but one of the things that um, I'm trying to target outside of recruiters um, when you talk about some of the traits of a, of a recruiter, is people that don't necessarily have the experience. I know you said you you ideally are looking for someone with 24 months of experience, but um, do you consider people outside of the industry, whether it be retail, rest, you know, customer service, inside sales, telemarketing, mm -hmm. things like that as well? So we we are Curta is developing a sourcing hub. And what we do is we have recruiters. We bring people in off the street, and we teach them how to be recruiters. Okay? And, Tom, we should probably talk about this. We make sure that they hit those, those first three points. Okay? And then we have a very distinct interviewing process that we put them through that enables them to back out. And I can give you that process, and you'll love the process because what happens is they have to jump through so many hoops to get into your office that by the time they get there, you could drop them in the middle of the desert and they'd still be successful people. Okay? And it's, it's everything from send your resume okay. to here's, a, here's an online test to come into our office and talk to us. And 
it, it's a very distinct pattern that we run people through. And Tom, I can show you that after completely. And okay. yes, we we've also we have a client who uses it, and uh, he's he's hired people that are outperforming him. <laughs> oh well, I won't complain about that. But um, okay, yeah. so you you do have a certain process that yeah. you guys use, and that's something that you work with with owners on yes. staff firms um, to kind of teach them that process. Yes, yes, we do. Yeah. Gotcha. All right, yeah. and do you use LinkedIn? I'm assuming you guys, I'm sure, utilize LinkedIn there. But do you um, use certain templates, message templates, when you're going out to try to attract these people? Uh, and yes, and I can show you a lot of that. I will tell you that the people that we're targeting to join our organization that are doing very, very well are um, not people that are going to be on LinkedIn. You okay. have to. And in that, and that's really is honestly okay, because um, remember, you want these people to be able to pick up the phone, and you want these people comfortable with searching. You actually find these people better on Facebook than you do on on LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Great. Okay. And then your next question was, when you say 250, that's GM or perm? It's actually it works out both ways. It doesn't matter. Okay. If okay. I just fill down my contractors, it's 250. I just fill down my permit, it's 250. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. Yep. Now, Melissa, you had a question. Can you can we get a definition of a send out? A send out is any time a client speaks to a candidate. That is it. If a client interviews on the phone, that's a send out. If a client brings a candidate in. For a face-to-face, that's a send out. We do not differentiate. When I say I want six send outs a week, I don't care if that is four second interviews, second send outs, or two first send outs. I just, the, the recruiter needs to have six send outs a week. They have to, and a send out is the candidate doesn't go to a the only differentiator there is if you send a candidate to your client and they meet with four managers, that's not four send outs. That's one send out. If they go back and forth four times, those are four send outs. Okay? It's the send outs we it's it's making sure your client your candidates are in front of your clients. And we need six of them a week. Any other questions? Okay. If anybody has any further questions, you can reach out to us directly at 6, uh, 617-396-4450 or 905-627-5060. We place recruiters, we train recruiters, and we work with you guys to help you get the right interviewing process in place. So if you have any questions, call us. That's what we're here for. We're here to help you. Rebecca, do you have an email address too? I do. It is Rebecca at Curta .ca. Great. Okay. And then what I will do is I will get this posted out on the web today for you guys so you can listen to it again. Awesome. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much. Have a good one, everybody. Thank Take you, care. Rebecca. Thanks. Bye.